Well, that's changed considerably. For number one, of the three broadcast networks now, two of them are being anchored by women. I would call that a big damn change, certainly from when I started. When I started, um, and as I said, we were led into the business because of the pressure of the civil rights movement and the women's movement, not because anyone at the networks or the stations wanted us. They really felt that putting the broads in broadcasting would ruin the party, and they may be right. Maybe it did. Uh, and in the beginning, all they wanted us to do was cover, you know, oh, go cover the story at the nursing home, but there's a fashion show down here. How about the story about the little dog down the street that saves the little cat? No, I'm here to cover politics. Oh, well, you're not a man. You know, I mean, it was rough. It really was. And there was a lot of literal patting us on our heads. You know, there, there, honey, sweetheart. Uh, I never had, and I can say this honestly, I, I, I never had uh, an employer, you know, imply in any way that sexual favors would get me anywhere, but that may have just been because nobody wanted my sexual favors, nor would they have had them. But I mean, I never, I, I, what I'm trying to say is I don't think that existed much, but there was a lot of paternalism that went on. And that can be just as damaging as harassment. And there was a lot, there was a lot of harassment in the, in the verbal sense, in the verbal sense that went on. Uh, we really were just supposed to be these cute little things. And there was also, there was a total double standard in looks at the time. I mean, honey, I worked for a lot of men and some of them had something to say about my work. All of them had something to say about my hair, uh, which is very different from what it used to look like. Uh, and, and I know all, all the women I know will tell you the same stories on this. Uh, that people would write in about your hair or that your bosses would talk to you about your hair or what you had on or how you dressed or, uh, I mean, the, the, when I went to work covering the Congress for NBC News, okay, I wore a blazer and a shirt and blue jeans and sneakers. Now, why was I able to, why did I do it? I did it because there was a lot of running around the Capitol and all of those office buildings to chase these congressmen down. And sneakers made a whole lot more sense than high heels. And because I like to wear blue jeans, I'm comfortable in them. Anything else is costume. Why was I able to do it? I was able to do it because there was a code of conduct in the United States Congress that said the men had to wear coats and ties to cover the Congress. Since no one had ever anticipated that women would be covering the Congress, there was no dress code for women. But I loved the fact that we were able to just turn it around and use it against because guys would complain, how come Ellerby gets to wear jeans and sneakers and we have to wear coats and ties? And mind you, I had on a blazer and a silk shirt from the waist up, which is all you ever saw. You know, how come Ellerby doesn't hey, check the code? You guys wrote the code. We didn't. It's, it's so much better now. And cable, I think, had a lot to do with that, with it coming back to the, the broadcast networks that way. Because in cable, you suddenly began to see women running things, women presidents of cable networks, women vice presidents, women executive producers of programs. And so as it worked back, then you got to see women, more women in positions of real power led to more women in positions of perceived and real power, which I think anchoring is perception and real. Uh, I think it's great that Diane and Katie are anchoring the news. I get a giggle every time I watch it. They both have earned it. They're both good at what they do. They are both journalists, and neither one of them slept her way there or got there for any reason other than the right ones.